taurine, ben benzoic acid, decalcium, pantothenate, pyridoxine, inistol. It sounds like the kind of stuff they put in street drugs. And I'm drinking it out of a can. And it's delicious. I have been on YouTube for a little over 11 years now. I've uploaded over a thousand videos, traveled to just about every continent with the exception of Antarctica, accumulated tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It has been a wild, wild journey. And as I get older and continue and progress in my YouTube career, I found that I really need to get back to my roots. A lot of the videos I felt like I've, I filmed and edited and participated in I've not been proud of. But the videos I have been proud of are, are videos such as in these series that we film. For example, Casting Concrete. I find that when I film those videos, I, I'm getting back to my roots as to who I, who I am and the YouTuber and the content creator I was maybe three or four years ago and kind of, you know, the type of person that built the foundation for this channel that you're watching now. And with that being said, I am currently in DFW Airport, a very busy, hectic airport. And in a few moments, we are going to be headed Florida bound to film volume two of Casting Concrete. We are going straight to the urban setting to go catch some very interesting fish species. Florida is essentially a fishing melting pot. Not only can you catch some big bass and some really weird invasive species, but you also are surrounded by salt water. So this week, we will be traveling all around the peninsula of Florida, dodging crazy people, catching huge fish, hopefully, fingers crossed, and exploring a place that, you know, I honestly am not super familiar with. I've only been to Florida a handful of times, and when I go, it's a quick trip, it's a quick turnaround. We have a full seven days to really experience a very unorthodox type of fishing, meet some pretty awesome people who I've corresponded with over Instagram and social media who I hopefully now will get a chance to meet face to face and most importantly film a series for you guys. But I'm gonna slam this monster right here just like the old days and uh, we're gonna get jacked for yet another series. So join me on this endeavor and uh, let's go cast some concrete. Stop. We are here in Orlando. This is the tourist capital of Florida and a snowbird's wonderland, home to countless amusement parks and you know very pricey vacation resorts. A lot of people mistaken this place as just being an area where you can spend a lot of money and see Mickey Mouse. But little known fact, this is also an angler's paradise. Surrounding Orlando are hundreds of lakes, most of them, if not all of them, chock full of some largemouth bass. So I figured we'd get this series kicked off right and go to one of the more well-known destinations here in Orlando, and that is Disney World. Not only to, you know, see Mickey Mouse, but also do some bass fishing. We're gonna have to be low-key though, because a lot of the lakes around uh, Disney are off limits, for, uh, for lack of better terms. If we're gonna fish Mickey's home turf, we gotta do this right. We're gonna have to be low-key and blend in with our environment. I think we're ready. Gonna make this quick. I already smell it in the air. We're definitely gonna get kicked out of the spot, but hey, if we get asked to leave, then uh, I'll pull the uh, I know Mickey card. Oh, I I know I'm good buddies with Mickey, actually. Spot number one. Oh, I already see security. Gotta, gotta keep a low profile. It is 2 p.m. and we've not made a cast yet. And I have a weird feeling that we're gonna get kicked out of this first spot. There's one. There he is. He's got it. There we go. First fish. Let's go, baby. Fell victim to the blazing worm. <laughs> there we have it. First bass of the entire trip. Casting concrete 2.0. Look at that. Just sucked down the blazing worm. That is what we love to see. We are tucked away behind the bit of a hill here, fishing the first spot of the day. Try not to uh, to get booted. And uh, it was all worth it for this little chunky guy. 
God, I love those Florida bass, man. They are just something else. Even the little ones have so much fight in them. Such a solid fish. Let's go, dude. Nice, dude. Let's go, baby. First of many. Get back down there, Jimmy. See ya. Put it there, dude. Awesome. First day in Florida, we already got a bite. These ponds can be so freaking juicy. And, and, not only can you get some numbers, but there are some absolute hogs. 10 pounders, just about everywhere you look. You just gotta put in the time and the effort. Luckily, we got all day. Let's stay hungry. Let's keep eating. Whew. I got some pretty good ones last time I was here too. A couple like threes and a four. No one bothered me too, it was amazing. Yeah, exactly. All right, back in. Cast number two. Oh, I just got bit again, dude. Here we go, ready? On again, dude. Literally next cast on the point. Another pip squeak, but dude, we'll take it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the blazing was putting them away. I just threw the frog over there and had zero luck. The old Guggen baits blazing. They just can't help it. Fish number two. We should keep track of how many fish we catch this trip. And then also the diversity, what kind of species we collect along the way. That is largemouth number two. Just a beautiful specimen at that. Thank you, buddy. See ya. Sweet. Third cast going in. Literally right, dude, that was insane. It didn't even hit the bottom. That bait did not even sink. That is three for three. <laughs> There is a reason why people risk coming to these ponds like myself. It's because they are very good. I don't recommend anyone trespassing or fishing areas where you can't, but you know, if you do, be polite, pick up your trash, leave when asked to, and uh, you know, put the fish back. See you later, dude. Ooh, he got crazy with that release. It's three for three. Can we go four for four? I think that would be a, a new yearly record if I caught four fish and four casts. Fourth cast going in, fingers crossed. Same spot. All these fish are coming out of the same spot too. When it gets hot this time of year, these fish get active. They want to move, they want to chase, they want to kill. There's nothing that a Florida bass loves more than sun and heat. They thrive on this kind of weather. Is that a fish or am I just tripping? Oh, we just broke the streak, unfortunately. Bummer. Oh, there's one. He's just ate it. Oh, that was a good fish. He ate it when I was burning it back in. Oh, there's one. Oh, there we go. There we go. Squeakies. <laughs> Number four. Number four. Oh, I touched him. Does that count? I think it counts. Definitely some, with the wind blowing in here too, there's definitely some busies. I like the way this looks. Here we go. Ready? Ready? There we go. Good one. He absolutely crushed the frog. That was so cool. Come here. A little bit better. Oh, he came undone. <sighs> that was probably the bigger one of the day. Not huge, but frog eaters are always fun. He ate right in that little canal. Dang. Let's throw back in there. You might have friends. Another one. Oh, much better. Much better. Literally next cast. Good one, too. Oh, man. This place is unreal. I saw one pounder in the boat. Oh, we just barely got her. <laughs> oh, chill, chill, buddy. Chill. Let's give her a quick rinse. <laughs> First the blazing, now the frog. Biggest one on the trip, not saying much, but whoo. I'll get your blood pumping. Literally lost one of the frog, jumped him. Went right back in there next cast and caught this guy. These fish are aggressive. Disney bass, do not play around. Thank you, dude. See you, man. Unreal, that was sweet. I bet you anything, there's gonna be another one. They're fired up over here, man. They're not playing around. Dude, no way. Like, no way. <laughs> this is incredible, man. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. Number seven? Is that what we have there? Oh, 
freaking ass. Oh my god, dude, he has it. Look at this. This is what he just spit up. He just spit up a little steak bait. Oh, and he's got a bluegill down his mouth, too. This guy's eating everything. <laughs> That's definitely the bigger one. Probably about close to a pound and a half. This is like being a kid again. Not only am I at Disney World where I came to when I was eight years old, but I'm catching bass. Can't beat it. Filthy frog, number three. All right. I want to keep the cameras on. I have a very weird feeling there's more than three fish over there. Parker Rob lost like a like legit like nine. Nine or eight pounder. There's a nice one. There we go. Whoo, right at the bank. This is purely adrenaline fishing right now. Just aggressive fish, worrying about whether or not a cop's gonna pull up on you. It's intense, dude. Blood rate is pumping. Catch you later, Jimmy. See ya. What is that? Six, seven? Seven. Wow, first day seven bass. There's been trips where I've fished for four days and not even caught a single one. It's looking pretty good. Here you go. There we go, another one. That's number eight. Oh. That was so cool. Number nine. Florida squeakies, gotta love it. I feel like a kid again. Hey, how are you? How you doing? Good, good. You guys fishing, huh? Yeah, doing a little bit of fishing. Um, are you from here, from Disney? Are you cast members at all? No, no, I'm from uh, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, are you just vacationing? Right? Yeah, yeah, right. just vacation, doing right. some fishing. Um, just so you know, there is no fishing on Disney property at all. Okay. Um, especially these ponds and things out here. Gotcha. You know? Not like none of the water that's. Yeah. So what's what is Disney no. like outside of like what? Um, well, on the outskirts of our property, there's a like, there's a lot of waterways you know close by that that's okay. But if oh, I gotcha. Yeah, that's on Disney property. Um, it's it's not allowed. There's a few places I don't know where you guys are staying. Are you staying on Disney property? Uh, no, like just in Orlando. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a few resorts that we have that are um, that are on big waterways. Okay. That they authorize for fishing. Oh. Through them. Okay. Cool. Um, if you stay there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a, if you're All right. Cool. cool. No, that helps. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Cool. Spot number two. Here we are, second spot of the day. It looks pretty juicy. The only issue is it's very busy. We're at Animal Kingdom right now. It's literally right there. We uh, spent $25 on parking, basically to fish a little tiny pond, but I think it's gonna be worth it. At the last spot, a security guard approached us and uh, let's just say I kind of shoot him away. I'm pretty intimidating in that sense, but uh, yeah, no, he just, uh, just told us, you know, we have to leave, but he understands. Obviously, he knew I was kind of a big deal around here in Florida. But he just said, you know, watch, watch out for uh, for other security guards, and if you fish the Disney property, you're probably going to get kicked out. No, I'm just kidding. He was a really nice guy, like too nice to even really make an argument with. But I do have a feeling we're going to get kicked out of here because of how busy it is. Like you guys can hear the cars right now. Pond's right there. This might be a two-minute mission, but at the very least, we'll get an opportunity to catch a fish. We're going to start a timer right now to see how long it takes to to get kicked out of here. It looks really good too. It looks awesome, like the fishing. Oh my God, already? Already? No, 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 come on, come on. No, 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 come on, quick cast. I know I'm gonna get bit. Security's already already pulled up. Who who snitched? Somebody had to have snitched on us. Maybe he doesn't see me. I just won't move. I'll just blend in with my environment. I just need one fish out here. This looks like the, the best stuff too. Like if, if we could have 10 minutes fishing here, we could probably catch five fish, but. We are a minute 14 in and we are <laughs> already getting kicked out. Oh. How you doing? Doing well, thanks. Oh, I, I know I'm good buddies with Mickey, actually. Sorry, yeah. No, yeah. Even if I know Mickey? No, okay. <laughs> Sorry. That one went over your head. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. Is there anywhere we can fish? Um, not on property, unfortunately, unless that's like a guided fishing tour. The fishing's so good in here, though. I know, yeah. <laughs> I, was here four, I was here four years ago, and I, I caught them really good out of here. I, 
I think it was probably the off season, but yeah. yeah. No. I was going to say, keep in mind, there's also gay. So yeah. There, there's... That's actually what we were fishing for. I'm just kidding. We were <laughs> trying to catch a bass. Yeah. But. All right. Well, yeah, I wish we could allow it. Yeah, I know. I'm, I like fishing too. Yeah, no, no. I know. <laughs> well, we decided to cut our losses. The Disney security is uh, well paid. I'll just put it that way. We had uh, a couple opportunities to catch some fish, but we just kept getting booted from these zones. But it's all good because we still got to experience Disney and the fishing around it. You know, we would have gone into some of the, you know, like exhibits like Magic Kingdom and Epcot and stuff like that. But I'm just, I don't know, I feel like I'm just too old for that, kind of beyond the whole childish stuff. No, I'm just kidding. We went to Magical Kingdom, uh, got to see the castle, of course, which was incredible. Can't go to Disney without seeing the castle. Also grabbed some ice cream. I had a vanilla cone, Caleb had a strawberry cone. After that, grabbed the balloon and uh, the best part of the day, we got to meet Mickey Mouse. M Mickey! 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 Pretty well-rounded day here in Orlando. Day number one for our journey. Yo, what was your favorite part about Disney? Seeing Mickey. Seeing Mickey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, Mickey. That was actually probably my highlight too. The fishing was fun, but seeing Mickey was kind of like insane. I've always wanted to see him. Mickey! <laughs> Cut more casts and we're out of here. Saying farewell to Orlando. Orlando was very generous. Now here's the thing, we gotta keep this momentum going. We're starting off on a very strong note, and oftentimes when we do, it slowly gets more difficult, but we're not giving up. We've got so many places throughout Florida that you need to travel to. I'm not gonna completely spoil where we're going because some of these places might be your hometown or where you grew up, and everyone seems to enjoy that when we go to you know, people's home turf and, and fish their waters. But I, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I thought it'd be more difficult. We really only fished for a couple hours today, and we had ourselves quite a start to Volume Two of Casting Concrete. are absolutely essential every time we come down here in Florida. It's how you need every day to start before going out and fishing. Good morning, welcome back. Last night we took uh, quite the drive from the bustling Orlando all the way to the Florida West Coast here in Tampa Bay. This is where we're gonna be starting off day number two. Very excited for today because uh, unlike the last Casting Concrete we filmed, we're not only focusing on the freshwater scene, more specifically largemouth. I know yesterday we started off with largemouth but uh, seeing as we are in Florida, we have the opportunity to fish what is essentially a peninsula state. Are you excited? Stoked. What are we doing today? Bluegill, Blue crappie, Gil, crappie. Um, maybe chubhead minnows. Yeah. Yeah. All jokes aside, we are uh, we're about to embark on quite the rip. We got a mirror out of rods. You got some big sticks, some 6Ks, some 8Ks, some conventional stuff. I mean, it's gonna be a good day. There's one specific fish that we're after, and a fish that is uh, no stranger to serving ang anglers humble pie, myself included. But this fish is kind of like one of those species that you kind of chase after on their terms. But that doesn't work. We got a ton of other options. Just launched the boat and getting ready to go. You boys excited? It's gonna be a fun day. Hopefully everything cooperates yeah, and we get for, on a good bite. Thanks again for taking me out. This is, uh, this is a lot different last time we filmed. Like, you know, the whole idea is like trying to get, like stay in this, like the urban sca like scape, but also chase after some some fish. So, saltwater, this is all new. We didn't fish any saltwater when we went to Texas. This is a nice breath of fresh air. So we're looking for like threadies, white baits, we're gonna get some live pilchards and uh, we have a bunch of dead baits to chum so we'll have a little extra on top of that just in case they're not cooperating with us. Now this is actually a very vital part of uh, fishing on here, getting good bait. If you don't have good bait, good live bait, then chances are you're probably not catching unless you're strictly artificial. So we're on this, uh, this little area looking for some thread fin, right? Some white, some white bait. Dude. 
My net is swimming away from me. That's what you're looking for, right there. Plenty of chummers. Right now, we're just gonna start chumming. Um, all the fish are kinda gonna hop in our chum slick and we're just gonna free line and hope we get the bite. We're getting bait on the sabiki. and pretty much in the midday, we've been fishing for this very fish that Blake is hooked up to right now. An absolute dino. Oh my God, right on cue too. <laughs> we've been fishing this uh, Skyway Bridge, which is route, what, 275, is that what it is? And uh, we were after this very fish. They're hard to catch. Not only are they hard to locate and hook, but landing them is just a whole nother ordeal. Perfect right here, Ben. Kind of let him do his thing so he's not green when he gets to your hands. A little one. They get three times the size. This is a mega shad. This is the fish we were after. We, were, we weren't thinking it was gonna happen, but uh, you know, Blake and Ben said, let's stick it out. We watched the guy next to us get hook up, hooked up, and we're like, screw it, let's stick around for a few more minutes. It resulted in this big beauty. Didn't get a chance to catch it, but just holding this fish is insanity, bro. It's been probably two years since I've held one of these fish. Unbelievable. There we go. Yeah, that's it. All right. Just nice meeting you. Me. Look at that tarpon, dude. Holy hell. <laughs> Tampa Bay tarpon. Right under the Skyway Bridge. Let him go. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. You ready, girl? You ready? Um, down she goes. Put it there, dude. Yeah, <laughs> Let's freaking go, boys. Can't beat that. All around. <laughs> we went from pond bass fishing to soaking bait under the Skyway Bridge here in Tampa Bay for mega tarpon. That was a, a small one. People have never caught a tarpon before probably think that's the biggest fish they've ever seen in their entire life. That's incredible. Last time I, I got a chance to do this was like two years ago in the Keys, but it's fun to do it here and it's still in that urban setting. People don't think there's giant fish like that just swimming right under where they commute to work every single day to their nine to fives. Unbelievable though. All right, so. What is this, dude? You can't be a flooded chin without a chin. <laughs> so, uh... Dude, we just got a tarp and you just hand me a... Hold on. A package. This is Johnston Jewelers. Yep. So, my family's run and operated a jewelry, jewelry business. Yep, in Seminole. Dude, that's so sick. 
I said, uh, I said before we go to Miami, I need a Cuban link, so I'm hoping that's what this is. <laughs> dude, you did not have to do this. This is insane. Is this a pro? Oh, dude, that's sick. <laughs> Holy s. <laughs> oh so my god. We were talking about how before we go to Miami, we gotta dress appropriately, and uh, lo and behold, you've got a, a perfect article of uh, of attire here that I can just pull up to the canals with. So we can do it, that's custom pendants in house, Is whatever you want to make, any fish, yep. Dude, that's lit. Holy bro. I figured we had to keep it appropriate to thank the Texas you. Yep. Tell your family I said thank you. Is it green diamond. too? It's green, there's isn't a, it? There's a green diamond in the eye. Holy s***, dude. That's a green diamond for Guggen Green. Oh yeah. Wow. Gotta kiss it for good luck. That's what's up, baby. Wow. That's so sick. I got iced out and there we got is. a tarpon today. Yep. I love Tampa. Thank you, boys. Appreciate yep. it. Epic. Wow. Happy that day. People. People here. You guys are so nice. Everyone's so nice. I mean, every time I come to Florida, it's, it's full of interesting folks. And I meet some really awesome people. And today is a spirit experience I'll never forget. That's just, you know, it's like the probably the second tarpon I've ever seen in true form, real life. Yeah. It's wicked. Absolutely awesome. wicked. All right. Well, wow, mission accomplished, we made it happen. I know it was really windy out on that on that bridge and I want to take a moment to kind of break down what happened. So Blake and Ben invited us on the rig this morning, went out with one goal in mind, that is to catch a tarpon. One person in this boat, just to catch a tarpon. They are, this is gonna be a terrible analogy, but growing up in the north, this is the only thing that I can use to mirror what a tarpon is. It's like basically like a muskie. It's not a very easy fish to catch. You're not gonna catch like 100 a day. And when you do hook them, there's the matter of landing them. There's concrete everywhere and braid and line and concrete just don't mix. So they're wild fish, they, they're acrobatics, they jump, they go crazy. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I think they're so sought after is because they are a challenging fish to catch. Not everyone can go out there and do it. But what is cool is everyone can go out here and go to spots like this and attempt to do it because we are, I mean, you can hear the traffic probably. There's airplanes flying over. Matter of fact, this uh, bridge that we're fishing right now is a public fishing pier. This fishing pier behind us, which was once a bridge back in the 80s, um, got knocked over by a like a shipping container. And I think something like, I don't know, it's like 15 cars went in the water. Was it? Yeah, school bus went in the water. It was a major disaster. So they had to start the project over, build a new bridge. And that is that beautiful skyway that uh, we were fishing under this morning for the tarpon. A lot of history over here, and it's awesome that they utilize what's left of this bridge for public fishing. That is a beautiful part about fishing places like Tampa and some of the other areas we're gonna explore. There's a lot of accessible areas to give it a dangle, but we did it. We can check tarpon off the list for Casting Concrete Florida. That was amazing, just to hold one of those things is like, it's a beauty in of itself. All right, well, we've had our film, mission accomplished. Got that tarpon, got a piece. We're gonna head off the water. It's way too windy to be out here filming. I had to do a recap there because like it's hooting right now, but we're gonna go back to mainland and uh, continue our journey and get in some more antics, see what uh, Tampa is, is all about. We're switching up gears, we're doing something very different. As you know, we got a, got to touch a, a tarpon this morning, which was just legendary, such a cool experience. We're now on the mainland, thankfully, because it's blowing Mach 90, and uh, we're doing something that Caleb suggested. Caleb's buddies have got a, a pond here in Florida, and it is full of just about everything. Whether you know this or not, Florida is home to a lot of fish species, some that don't belong here, including some invasive species that are found in the Amazon rainforest, uh, in all other parts of the world. And they can thrive here because the climate's so warm, the water's perfect, and there's just so much of it. But in this pond are not only bass and tilapia, but there's snook, there's tarp, and there's paku. I'm just gonna shut up and we're uh, we're gonna, basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna feed these fish. We're not gonna catch them. We're not gonna hassle them. We're just gonna feed them and just show you guys what a, a unique pond here in Florida can hold. This is, I don't wanna say uncommon because you can find stuff like this all over the state, but this is pretty wild. As far as like a Midwesterner or a Texas angler like myself, you don't see stuff like this every day. Fun fact, we've gone all day without me catching a single fish and I've still had probably one of the best times thus far throughout this whole experience. Not even gonna go over it, you guys know what happened. It's been wild and huge shout out to Caleb and everyone else who's a part of this video for making it happen. It was a 
special. I'm never going to forget this. But the big thing is, is I haven't caught a fish yet. And the goal throughout this whole series is to catch a fish at each single spot. So we've got a couple hours of daylight left. Honestly, maybe an hour left. Uh, we decided to check out this pond over here that's actually right next to a busy road. Uh, you've got kids playing flag football, soccer. But, you know, like the whole mission that we're on, we're looking for places like this, people's backyards. This is actually a completely public area and uh, it should have some bass in it. So I brought two rods with me, tried and true. Florida go twos, a frog, filthy frog, and of course the blazing worm. So we're gonna give this probably about an hour and then head on uh, head on south, farther down in Florida. So sick, dude. Absolutely freaking crushed it. Oh my god. I actually thought that was a big one. <laughs> well, I can't catch tarpon, but at the very least I can catch a Tampa Tampa largemouth bass. That was so sick. Caleb's like, ah, let's just kind of go back to where we're fishing early. I'm like, no. Places like this where you have to bushwhack and it's kind of hard to make a cast, usually have some fish lurking in there. Nice. We did it. We're not getting skunked today. Didn't get the numbers like we did yesterday, but can't complain, man. Fish is in my hands. That's unreal, dude. This thing hammered it. No mercy. It's wicked shell here, so I'm going to give Buddy kind of a toss. No harm, no foul. I know that looks bad, but it's better than releasing him into one inches of water. He's cool. He's chilling. Thanks for biting the frog, bud. I feel like the frog is going to be the kind of the, the player when we go to these bassy spots. Obviously, we're not going to fish for bass everywhere we go because, you know, Florida's got a lot more diversity than that. Oh, there's a little gator. Nice. Dinner, maybe? Gator nuggets? Yeah. No, that's off limits. Can't touch them. Well, we're on our way. On to the next thing. Thank you, Tampa. This was an experience and a half we're actually driving over the tampa bay right now such a beautiful place i've only been here a couple times definitely coming back and this was a much different experience from the last time i was here we're now uh, headed due east kind of back where we started in orlando to link up with uh, a couple buddies who also film videos and uh just chill with them for a bit because they are from this area or at least one of this and hang with them might do a podcast and then make our way down south to our third destination. But things are looking good. This trip's gone well so far. Met a lot of amazing people today. We're gonna meet even more. We just have like so much planned for you guys for, for the video. Like I'm just excited to not only experience this myself, but then to, you know, show it on video for y'all watching at home. This is incredible. I hope you guys got a kick out of this. Very different. And uh, although I felt outside of my comfort zone, I, I learned a lot today and enjoyed it. Anyway, we're on the road. Got about an hour, actually no, 49 minutes until we're there. So we'll uh, meet you guys when we pull up. This year, 2022, we're five months in. What can we expect from you, legitimately? I think... Winners, we've made it. Welcome to Alligator Alley. We uh, had a pretty interesting night last night and an even interesting morning. We traveled uh, about an hour and a half to go link up with some good friends, Tristan and Brandon. Participated in their podcast, we actually filmed two podcasts. Pulled an all-nighter, because we were having so much fun, got a little rowdy, and uh, didn't get any sleep. Basically went all through the night, into the morning. Tristan and I did a bit of fishing, Brandon went to bed. Uh, fishing went a little something like this. I can keep heading you up. Oh, no. We're good, we're good. I got dumped off a paddleboard, lost my rod, almost lost the GoPro. It was absolute mayhem, didn't even catch a single fish. I uh, took about a four hour nap, woke up, and now we are here at probably one of the most notorious urban Florida fisheries, and that is the I-75 route, which kind of spans the width of Florida. And what lies just next to this very busy highway is water, water full of not only alligators, but fish fish of all walks too. I mean, you've got some fish in here that probably salt water. I mean, you've just got like bass, you've got invasive species. It is a melting pot of stuff that we could potentially catch today. We've only got a few hours, unfortunately, to make things happen as we make our way to Miami, which we'll be fishing tomorrow. But I figured this would be an awesome opportunity to kind of showcase like what is truly casting concrete. I mean, we have a bridge right here. Cars have been passed, but down below are hopefully some hungry fish. So there's a reason why they call it Alligator Alley, and it's because 
we've got big boys like that floating around the water's edge. Uh, so we're gonna watch our step, try not to mess up, and see if we can go crank some fish. Day number three here in Florida, do it right. All righty, let's get to fishing. So we are one rod down, only have uh, three twigs for the rest of the trip. But I think here, what we'll do is we'll uh, do a bit of finesse fishing, see if we can't go crack, crank on a, I don't know. I honestly don't even know. I mean, there's obviously bass in here. I'm seeing bait flicker, guessing those are shad. I did see a tilapia earlier. That's the cool thing about fishing these canals. You just don't really know what you're gonna catch. It's like a box of chocolates. Yep, okay, back it up, back it up, back it up, <laughs> back it up. <laughs> I almost stepped on him. That's why I was going slow. I'm like, I bet you anything I'll see a snake. No, that's, I think that's a, I think that's one you don't want to get bit by. I'm not a huge herpetologist here, but pretty sure we just spot a little venomous snake. I don't know. It could have been completely harmless, but I don't want to find out. Um, also too, not sure if this is a great idea to be walking around the uh, I-75 marsh. I mean, I've actually come in contact with two things today that could probably, you know, ruin my day, if not my entire life. Gators and then a snake but I don't know, it may not have been a venomous. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up, get back on I-75, keep trucking down uh, Alligator Alley, and just pray that we can at least get one fish, salvage the day, just get warmed up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be an epic sesh, but first things first, let's get bit. All right, here we are, third roadside spot. We've got like maybe a couple minutes of daylight left, but let's make the most of it. What I'm doing right now is kind of weird, but it makes sense. I'm taking a 3.3 inch sausage swimmer and I'm trimming it all the way down to the point where it's probably about two inches and I'm cutting the bottom off so it's a little bit more slender. It looks like a, a little minnow that's just kind of scurrying around. It seems like most of the bait that's in here is, is tiny, like really tiny stuff. And I imagine something colorful, kind of like this color I'm throwing, like this electric shad, is gonna draw their attention mainly because a lot of the fish in here are colored up. It looks kind of st stupid, honestly, but I'm just twitching it around, moving it pretty erratically, just trying to grab the fish's attention. A large one. He sees it. There we go. <laughs> Got ourselves a little busy. Damn, I wonder if we're gonna catch a fish over two pounds this trip, or at least a bass over two pounds. So cool, dude. To think that this guy has got to compete with a little bit of everything. I don't know how they survive, but they do. Bass are resilient, little crazy little dudes. Freaking stud. Thanks, man. I appreciate all the love. Nice little fish to end our road trip to Miami. Gonna send Jimmy back and uh, keep trucking. That was fun. Little roadside canal mission, success. Oh my God, nice peacock right there. Nice peacock. Come on, find that thing. Find that. Oh, he's all over it. He's all over it. Peacock, nice peacock. Oh, good fish. He's falling all the way in. God, I'm trying not to move too much because I don't want to spook him. Oh, there we got him. That's so sick. Nice little peacock. That was dirty, man. That was freaking dirty. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Look how colored up this one is too. Wow, freaking beautiful. Look at the colors on that fish. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is just stupid. You come to Florida and you catch a fish that is native to the Amazon. That's so weird. And not only are you doing it in Florida, but you're doing it on the side of the road. Like anyone can fish here. This is fully public. This is a huge parking lot and right next to it is the canal. And in the canal are these amazing freaking fish. Probably one of my top five favorite freshwater species. They're powerful, they're beautiful. They're so much fun. They jump, they go crazy. You can catch them on lures and live bait. Wow, unreal. Thank you, dude. One last look before we send her back. Thank you. Back she goes. Put it there. We salvaged the day. It wasn't looking good. No sleep. Too much rowdiness with the boys. But we made it freaking happen. And this is just like the very small tip of the iceberg of what we're truly about to experience. There's a nice peacock right there. I didn't even see him. Oh, he's looking at it. Oh, he just gummed it. There we go. Oh, that was so dirty. That was so, oh, he just came off. No, that was a good one. Holy hell. I literally just stopped it and he just crushed it. Dude, that was insane. Oh, I had a nice one. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Solid fish right now. Oh, we're hooked up. Another peacock. That was dirty. That was dirty. My freaking, the banger was tangled and it was just helicoptering on the surface. 
another insane fish. Look at the freaking patterns on these guys. Unbelievable. Wow, we are making it. We're having a freaking day. Last minute buzzer beater sesh. Came down the water's edge to release this guy. It is honestly incredible to think that this fish came from the Amazon, the Amazon River, and somehow ended up on a busy highway canal, and they thrive. They love it in Florida. Freaking awesome. Let's send them back. Thank you, Baba, for playing. There she goes. <laughs> so much fun, dude. There we go. Nice one. Nice one. He's probably going to come off. He's not hooked very well. Dude, this is unbelievable. That's probably the, the bigger one of the day. Not a bad fish. I'm not going to get too close to the edge because we have some gators checking us out. Oh my freak. Wow, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's a quality pee pee right there. This is so much fun, dude. I did not expect this. I thought we'd catch a couple largemouth, but I didn't think we'd see a single peacock. Buddy wants uh, to see what's going on over here. Unfortunately, this is my PP, buddy. Wow, that's a chunky one. That's probably about two pounds. Whoo! Look at the size of that one. That's a little bit better. Every fish looks different. Like the colors in this thing are wicked. Blue top and a red bottom tail. Legendary, man. This has been such a memorable afternoon. All right, I'm gonna send it back. See, you, dude. Back she goes. That was a good, it was like two pounds, something like that. He stuck me really good too. Wow, I'm getting swollen. Oof, that hurts. Funny enough, what we're doing right now is I'm just kind of going down the bank and I'm tossing this little tiny micro banger. This is a small, this is the tiny version of our super popular square bell crankbait. And it's the perfect size for these peacocks. You know, it's like not too much, it's pretty subtle, but it throws enough action to uh, get their attention. Really good hooks too. They stay pinned. We've only lost one today. It was because I set the hook a little too hard, but the rod we're using is a two-piece finesse Guggen Green. This is uh, what we flew with. Pretty awesome little stick for this kind of fishing. I think this is this would be like honestly perfect if you wanted to come down here and bass fish and peacock fish. I'll leave all this link down below too, including the micro banger, the line, the rod, all this, but uh, yeah, that's freaking sick, man. Let's keep going. Oh, and we have a buddy over here. Mr. Alligator saying, what's up? What's up, buddy? How you doing? I think he was hoping I was gonna chuck the peacock to him. Easy meal, but he's lazy. We did it. We got the roadside peacock. That was one that I wanted to tick off our list here in Florida so badly. You guys can probably barely hear me. This is just wild. I, for a second there, kind of got lost and forgot we were even filming. I was having just true, genuine fun, just like a kid again. And to think that this is just kind of like the warm up, like the appetizer to the appetizer, like it's gonna get, hopefully, fingers crossed, a little bit better. So what's next is we're gonna go farther into the city of Miami, like the true concrete jungle, meet up with a friend of Caleb and I's and uh, do a bit of fishing with them. But first, let's get some rest, let's get settled, we'll head to the hotel. Look at that poke, oh my God. That's sick. We've made it, we're here in Miami. This place is wild, it is so alive. I've only been here a couple of times, but every time I have been here, it's been it's been fun. Uh, you know, whether we're fishing or just kind of bouncing around in the city, it's, it's always been a, a good time. A good place to visit, but not stay too long. Got a little taste of some peas, some roadside peas, which was absolutely clutch. That was beyond expectation. Even one was like enough, and we caught multiple. We're gonna get some sleep though. We've had quite a long past couple of days. Gonna link up with an angler, an individual who I've always wanted to fish with, person I've gone back and forth with many times over Instagram and social media, but I'm pretty stoked to, to actually get a chance to fish with him. Oh, there goes another airplane. That's crazy. Anyway, wieners, I bid farewell to all of you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's little session. Let's get ready and ripping for tomorrow. Good night, see you in the AM. We're in it. We're going deep into Miami this morning. Welcome back, it is day number four. This is probably the most excited I've been all trip. I don't ever really get a chance to fish this place too much. Last time I was in Miami, I think it was maybe like three years ago, something like that. And uh, it's an interesting city, to say the least. It's, it's one of a kind, it's super unique. You won't find any other city like this in Florida. And one of the main reasons of that is because it is right on the water. It's in a very interesting, unique part of Florida. On the outskirts, it's pretty much nothing. Like the drive we took this morning, or I guess the drive we took last night, rather, we just drove through like, emptiness, vastness, wildlife. And then all of a sudden, you're in this urban landscape. It's 
pretty cool place, so we're uh, actually headed right now to meet a friend, I guess, I've kind of corresponded with over the internet, but never met in person. His name is Eric Estrada. Very awesome dude. Not only a really good angler, but I believe he's a guide. He's a, an incredible artist, uh, and he's really good behind the camera, too. So I'm excited to link up with him. He's going to kind of be our guide for today. Walk us through how to chase after these urban Miami fish. I think the idea is we're going to stick on foot, chase after just about anything that swims, but most particularly try to catch that tarpon. Try to catch a tarpon from foot. There's been very few times I've actually had the opportunity to chase one. So I'm really stoked. This is going to be super unique. We're meeting him at a little Cuban breakfast spot right now. Miami's got a very rich and heavy Cuban culture here due to a lot of the immigration and it shows. Anyway, let's go grab some coffee, meet up with Eric, figure out what the, uh, the general game plan is for today because I'm itching, I'm ready to catch. This is it, we're at the spot. This is a tropical restaurant. You said this is this used to be open 24 hours, right? Yeah, I realized it wasn't when I sent him the pin drop last night. I'm like, oh, that's weird, it says 7 a.m. Took no time for people to flood in here though. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. By the way, this is, this is Eric. He's gonna be uh, basically our, our guide for the most part, not only for fishing, but just kind of the city in general. Like when I go to like somewhere like Miami, I wanna I wanna eat what it's known for. And in this case, Cuban cuisine. We're getting coffee. We're getting some Cuban breakfast. Just gotta get fueled up for this uh, for this journey. Well, how many spots do you think we'll fish today? Uh, it all depends. If the fishing's good, not many. Not many. We'll catch yeah. all the fish in a few spots. But I was out two weeks ago with some guys. Um, and it was not very good. <laughs> really? We'll just hit it on the foot. Complete foot mission today. Might even do some, I mean, fly, right? That's kind of the mission. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could throw some conventional stuff too. I want to try a fly, honestly. Try, but, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, whipped up a bunch of flies yesterday. Awesome. So. I'm stoked. Well, we're going to grab a, a bite here and go over today's game plan. Eric actually did a fully custom painting for me. It was a brook trout. I, I didn't have any of the measurements and like that. So instead of doing a mount, I'm like, how can I like commemorate this giant fish catch that I caught through the ice? You whipped it up. It was pretty quick. It was like the turnaround time was insane, and it, that was the only one of that like design that was full unique, right? Yeah, yeah. I, only brook trout I've ever done, actually. Oh, really? That's yeah. cool. Well, you crushed so. it. Anyways, not only getting a chance to fish super unique waters, but you know, getting to hang out with you, figure out you know what what he's all about. How you've been growing up fishing these waters your whole life. When did you start fishing? Uh, I've been fishing since I was a kid. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. My parents would take me down to the Keys wow. every summer. My grandfather was a pastor in Key West, so every summer we were there, oh every gosh. weekend we were there fishing, catching tarpon. What a good place everything. to grow up to learn how to fish. <laughs> the day I got a fly rod, I jumped seven tarpon in a row. The first fish I hooked on a fly was tarpon, yeah. and I learned, essentially, it's a lot easier to catch tarpon, for me at least, on a fly rod. Really? You're more connected to the fish with the hook set. The it's a little rusty when it comes to fly, but we'll, we'll eventually get there. Take a look at where we're at right now and where we're fishing. This is so cool. This is exactly what I wanted to do. I think so many of you guys are probably watching this thinking, what, really? really? You're fishing a junkyard? Why would you go to a junkyard? The ocean is right there. Beautiful, crystal clear water in Biscayne Bay is right there full of fish. Why would you make it a point to come here? Because it's unique, it's fun, it's exciting, it's different. So far, it's been a pretty slow morning, but we're not giving up. Eric's been, Eric's, we, we, we've been to how many spots now? Like four, I think? About four or five spots. But we've yeah. seen them. Seen yeah, probably well, two dozen. Spot we saw a few fish. Yeah. I just had one heat right now and pulled the hook on it. Yes. So we're getting better. We're getting close, right? Getting it's close. like it would be bad as if we kept going to these spots and we weren't seeing anything. We've, a lot of fish are rolling. The, the cool thing about tarpon is it's very visual fish. They will let you know if they're in the area. Similar to sturgeon, gar, arapaima, they have this thing where they need to come up and grab air. I don't know how, for like what time interval it is. I know for gar it's every 15 minutes. Well, the tarpon is just lack of oxygen. So like, in so this, whenever it's low. Yeah, in this scenario, there's barely any oxygen in the water, especially now it's sunny and there's no waves. So they're gonna come up higher and they're gonna have to come up right there. You see the water quality here, it's trash. Yeah, But not a whole lot of DO in there. Tarpon are the only fish that could survive this because they breathe air through their bladder. Isn't that wild? It's insane. That's, that's their survival mechanism is the fact that uh, they don't completely rely on the dissolved oxygen in the water but they can just kind of, you know, go up top, grab some, and then go back down. But that's that's great for an angler because we can see that fish. We know it's there. Even though they're not biting, it gives us optimism, and then we can continue to find those fish that are willing to eat. Tarpon just ate top water. Did you right see there. that, right? Was that over there? Oh, that was a roller right that here. That was a roll. There was a top water heat right here. Mm, exactly. Let's, uh, let's continue. There's another something right there, too. Uh, they're really active over here, for sure. Same 
fish. Another fish just came up. I don't know if it's the same one or different, but it's in the same spot. Oh my god, come on. Find that fly, Jimmy. I'm right in front of fish. They keep rolling in front of me, but I just can't get them to look at my fly. So weird. But right there, too. It's not like there's no fish here. Like, there's definitely fish here. Just need to catch one slipping. Right there. Two big rolls. Oh, another one. Oh, that's a, that was a little guy. That was so sick. They're freaking everywhere over here, honestly. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, 100%. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. Right at my feet. Right at my feet. Just had my first, like, interaction with one. Oh, my God, dude. That was, a, that was an eat right there. They are literally every... Look at them. They're going crazy. Saw him blow up on the surface, dropped the fly two feet ahead of him, and inhaled it immediately. There's a little guy right here. It's crazy to think that these fish grow up to be, you know, two, three hundred pounds in certain parts of the world. But eventually, once he gets to like 40, 50 pounds, they start to try to move out of here and go back into the bay. You know, not the most uh, cinematic release, but he swam off strong. Spot number four, success. Eric uh, cracked a little, what, like maybe eight pounder, five pounder? No, I was tiny. That tiny. Was probably like two, three pounds. Oh, really? I, yeah. it, little two, little three, but that's just how big I think these fish are I'm calling an eight to two but that was nice caught it just right over there first fish of the day we're moving we're in that forward progression right now anyway we're about to change spots before we do that I wanted to show you guys just the quality of the water we're fishing take a guess at what that is that is engine oil from the runoff from the junkyard that is in the water that is also ending up on my hands because it's getting on the line and I'm stripping the line in that is disgusting. It's pretty sad, honestly. Yeah, it's freaking gross. But I mean, the yeah. fish are still in there. Yeah, if you look at the fly lines, you know what I'm saying? Like, Black. This is, and the rod is, is dirty. I've honestly never seen anything like that. It's that there's that much oil in the water that it gets on your hands while you're stripping in your line. Anyway, just a testament. You gotta keep these waters clean, do your part. Anything you can, you know, you can do. Obviously in this scenario, it's it's pretty that they, you know, have a junkyard right next to a thriving little canal like this, but it is what it is. Um, you know, put the fish back, let them live pick up some trash, do your thing. But anyway, spot number, I guess, spot number five now, heading that way. I bet if you lit a match on a, on a spot in here, it'd probably uh, catch a little bit. Honestly, I, I think it would. Mammy's full of a lot of surprises. Anyway, we just grabbed some good grub. Shout out to uh, Eric for, for buying lunch. That was really good. Got some tacos, got some carne asada bowls. It was so good, so freaking good. Um, also, too, where we're at is just kind of Low key, we don't want to be walking around with a big expensive camera, so we're just going to film with the chesty and then also the phone. Just don't want to take that risk, right? It can be a little bit sketchy at times. There we go. That was sick. <laughs> Little tarpon we'll take. That's my first ever on the fly, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> we got it done. They look honestly way cool when they're little. Like, they look yeah. crazy. Well, they're a miniature version. The thing is, they grow into their eyeball. I mean, they have Yeah, I just noticed that his eyeballs are huge. So that's normal for their eyes to be that big? Yeah, when they're little, their eyes are big and they grow around the eye. Wow, that's so sick. This is my first ever tarpon on the fly. Look at their eyeballs, man. Eric was just explaining that uh, they grow into their eyes, so their eyes stay about similar size, and then as they get bigger, it looks a little more normal. It's crazy to think these guys get up to 200 pounds. Like, that's wild. There we go. Thank you, man. That's dope. <laughs> just a little, little tiny baby, but gotta start somewhere. Unbelievable. See you later, buddy. It's, it's just a little baby, but just fun to come tight like we worked hard for these fish they're not easy to catch right that's the, that's the general like agreement that tarpon are difficult and then when you do it like this and you put a fly in hand especially like an unexperienced fly guy like me it uh, becomes even more of a challenge we got it done that's so sick wieners the tarpon are beating me down right now 
This is spot number seven, I think. We've caught number one. 49. Spot number 49, sorry. My apologies, Eric corrected me. This, is, uh, this has been a very eye-opening experience. I just, I guess I'm amazed as to where these fish live. I mean, I've learned today that tarpon can, don't get me wrong, can pretty much live anywhere. Pretty much, yeah. Like, we've, we were fishing ponds today that I don't even think I would even glance at twice for like a largemouth, let alone something as prestigious as a tarpoon. But they're in there. I mean, the cool thing is, they, you know, you go to the pond, you can see them, they're rolling, but they're just not rolling on my bait. So uh, we're gonna try this spot, looks pretty, pretty saucy. But fingers crossed, if not, we're not getting skunked there. We both got a fish, that's all that matters. There goes a mullet or something right there. Hey man, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. Let's do it again. Come down, sure. come down to Texas, chase some stripers on the fly. I've never stripers in Texas. Is that what you said? Oh yeah, they they stripers in Texas. They reproduce too. It's a little what? bit of salinity in the water. Yeah, big ones. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I've big. never done it on the fly, but seeing as that's kind of your thing, yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. This was. Yeah, I wish we could would have had a little bit better. <laughs> don't. Yeah, no. I'm, I'll come. We would have stuck some of those bigger so, fish that swipe. And my dad always said whenever he had like a really fishing day, and I'd be like scheming and like fuming in the car. He'd be like, Hey, listen, it's experience. You just, we fish the experience. It's all about like who you're with, what you're doing, and where you're going. And like I hold true to that. Oh, sweet Miami. I'm gonna miss this place. As crazy and as busy as this city is, it's pretty incredible. The fishing here is nuts. Yesterday we uh, did a lot of canal hopping and soul searching for some big brackish water tarpon and uh it was a very exciting experience we linked up with a good friend eric estrada who's not only an incredible angler he's an artist he's a videographer he's a family man you guys have to check out some of his art i'll leave a link down below i've purchased some of his art uh, one of my like original trout paintings i have is hung up in my office and it is seriously the most incredible piece ever with that being said it's time to move on to the next city we are headed to isla mirada which is in the Keys. We really didn't know if we wanted to include the Keys with this Casting Concrete series because the Keys can be kind of natural, but there's some there's some urban spots that we can definitely dabble in. But before we do that, we gotta get some salt water gear. In order to get fully prepared, before we move on to the next chapter of this journey, we're gonna stop off at a tackle store called JD Outdoors, who was recommended to me by Eric Estrada. The guy who runs the shop's actually name is Jesus Estrada, but they're not related. I absolutely love these little urban fishing tackle stops. I grew up in the suburb of Chicago, so this is you know, places like this is where I did a lot of my shopping. This is going to be so sick. They apparently have some Guggen baits here too, and they sell skiffs. Like little saltwater skiffs for fly fishing and chasing fish on the flats. That's so cool. Alright, let's go check it out. Get some gear. I tell you what, this has probably been the roughest start to any morning we've had, and we pulled an all-nighter on this trip. I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's the whole Keys, or just El Mirada, but it is impossible not only to find parking, but places to fish. Full transparency right now, we parked here, looked good, this was recommended to us, this little zone, this beach, and then this guy comes up to me, he's like, hey, just so you guys know before, yeah, have a good one, take care. And uh, this guy walks up to us, he's like, hey, just so you know, before you go fishing, you're not allowed to fish here. And I'm like, first of all, there's no signs, I'm like, why? I'm like so confused. Like, well, read the sign. It says no fish on the beach. I'm gonna say screw it. I'm gonna fish the beach. You know, I don't. I don't really get why you can't. You, we're gonna wait out there 100 yards. We're gonna be away from all the people. And the thing is, is we're not even gonna technically be fishing the beach. We're gonna be like, oh, look at that right there. Perfect. This guy right here. Look at this guy. So you can't fish the beach, but you can fish on the water on the beach. So we're just gonna go out there and wait, and hopefully just try to, you know, not get busted. Cops are actually coming right now, so we'll see what, where this goes. Really? Yeah. Well, well, tell me where I need to go. Okay, cool. I appreciate it, thank you. For the love of Christ, all I want to do is fish. I've been up for seven hours now, haven't even made a single cast. The turns have tabled. A cop, instead of kicking us out, gave us a spot to fish. We were gonna fish that beach, which we were told we couldn't fish, and the cop was like, yeah, you don't even want to be here because it sucks. And I uh, recommended this spot. Busy highway, multi-million dollar homes going up, 
this is true casting concrete. Oh, cowfish. Look at this thing. Look at this thing, dude. Look at this. Is that a cowfish? Is that what that is? <laughs> Holy hell. That is the coolest looking thing ever. Oh, I don't think it's small enough for him. He's trying to eat it down there. <laughs> He's still there. He's looking for it. He ate the claws. I believe that was a cowfish, which is like, I think they're, they're kind of like triggers. I don't know if they're in the same family, but hopefully we can catch one today so I can show you. If I don't, then we'll put a picture of a cowfish right here. There's no picture that we caught one. A little, little foreshadowing there. <laughs> uh, that was a cool little thing. We're on here. We're out here looking for everything, but I guess what that is. Uh, their mouths are like really little, and I'm throwing a giant hooks. This might be my PV cowfish. PV cowfish. Bring it up and then put the put the bait like right on the tip of the hook. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh wow, they pull. Holy hell, they pull. I actually got him. Oh my god, dude. I did not think that that fish of all things would be a screamer. Look at that. <laughs> we finally got the elusive cowfish. This is the fish I've been after my entire life. Oh my gosh, just don't, just don't come off, baby. Stay pinned. You know, people come down here for bonefish and tarpon, but they forget about the elusive cow. These things are legendary. Also, I don't even know if they're called cowfish. I'm just making the assumption. Wow, incredible stuff. <laughs> This thing is actually messing me up right now. A cowfish, uh, hopefully I land this thing so I can show you, but a cowfish basically looks somewhat like a, a balloon, like a fat balloon with fins. It's, it's pretty incredible this thing has such agility. It's just scooting across the flat like no big deal. I don't know how I hooked it though because their mouths are so small. Dude, no way. <laughs> so cool. What the hell? It looks like it's from outer space. Oh, nasty. I think the reason why I caught this guy is because he was a little bit bigger. He's a little bit more substantial mouth. Now, I don't know if there's any protocol with holding these guys, but I'm just going to assume he does, uh, he's got something that would probably mess me up. Look at that. What a interesting fish. First ever cowfish. I honestly didn't even know these things were on the flats, but it's pretty much been the only thing we've been able to find. And while it's not what uh, Alamorada is known for, it's still a pretty cool catch. And you guys will have to, you know, fix me in the comments. If this isn't a cowfish, let me know. Could be a, I don't know, a sheepfish or maybe a horsefish. I, I have no idea what kind of barnyard fish this is. Check it out. The legendary, elusive, super ultra rare cowfish. Yeah, gladly. Buddy put up a hell of a fight there. Oh, dude, he's just completely turned colors. Do you see that? Here, buddy. Let's revive you. There he goes. He's good. What the heck? Did you guys see that? That fish changed colors in my hand. He was like a light periwinkle blue, and then he just turned to brown. I, I can't guarantee we'll catch anything else today, but what I can guarantee is that is probably the weirdest fish that we are going to catch. If you guys aren't on that uh, cowfish scene, you need to be on it. It's a wave, man. It's a wave out here. Bump fish are tight and all, but... These guys, they hump. Oh boy, well, I don't know if that was uh, really the best waiting session I've ever had, but to be completely transparent, I didn't think we'd get anything. I've never fished it before. I don't even really know how to saltwater fish in the flats when it comes to waiting, seeing as I'm a Midwestern dude, but we did get one really crazy looking alien fish. Like I said, I don't know what it was, but you guys will have to let me know. We're like smack dab in the middle of Ivan Murata and uh, there's a lot to do here, you know, aside from fishing. I think we might go get some key lime pie because if you're on the keys, you gotta get some key lime pie. Got myself a key lime mimosa because I'm bougie like that, pinky out, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go up to Jupiter, then, well, I'll leave the last spot a surprise, but you guys know where we're going tomorrow. Anyway, mission kind of success. I don't really know how to feel about that, but we came tight and the drag was peeling, so that is all that matters. Anything you wanna add, seeing as you're from Florida and, you know, whack <laughs> this is tough it is tough man it's usually not like this I no swear. well i think if we weren't uh jets i think we'd be able to probably get you know get something going here yeah. uh we got a lot against us today i don't want to necessarily focus on the bad but like for the first seven hours we just had to find a place to park like it was ridiculous anyway let's keep trucking keep fishing never stop right
Well, Wieners, we've traveled a few clicks up north to Central Florida. We are in West Palm Beach right now. We had to abandon that south bite because, well, there was no south bite. We were experiencing quite the lull. Bad news is yesterday sucked, but today is a new day. That is the good news. We can wipe the slate clean and start over. Unlike most anglers who come to West Palm, we are not after giant snook or any of those epic saltwater species. We are, in fact, going to be chasing a very despised fish, but also a very sought after fish. I don't know how to explain these things. They can breathe air, they're hyper aggressive, they are all over South Florida, and they are, for lack of better words, not supposed to be here. Seeing as this is my first time ever chasing after one of these fish, I figured we link up with a fellow YouTuber and an angler by the name of Ryan Esquero. He's from this area. And he hit us up the other day. He's like, hey man, if you guys wanna do something creative, and try to catch a very weird fish species in an urban setting, let me know. So of course that's what we did. This fish species that we're gonna be going after today is the bullseye snakehead. I don't know too many people who specifically come to this area to try to catch a snakehead, but growing up as a kid, I've always wanted to do so. They are such strange fish. They're not supposed to be here, but they thrive in this ecosystem. And just about anywhere they live in these Florida waters, they dominate. Right now they should be kind of coming off the spawn. They're guarding their fry. They're incredibly good parents, and hopefully you guys can see that on camera today. There's no other fish like them. And by the way, if you are chasing after snakehead, make sure you know the difference between a snakehead and a bowfin. Bowfin are incredibly native. They're supposed to be here. Snakehead are not. And if you do catch snakehead, eat them. They're incredible eating, and uh, I read something funny this morning. Apparently, they've got a medicinal value to them as well. I don't know if that's true or not, but we're not going to test that theory. Anyway, let's get all packed up, meet Ryan, and hopefully get one step closer to catching one of these crazy-looking fish. Ryan's stepdad owns a sandwich shop in town. It's closed, but he's yeah, so yeah, kind to open up, up for us. Yes, sir. What a freaking legend. By the way, this is Ryan. He's gonna be uh, our saving grace. I've kind of explained to him what's been going on for the past couple days, and you don't seem too worried. No, we're gonna crush it. That's, wow. But not an wow. empty stomach. Not an empty stomach. <laughs> no, not an empty stomach, I like it. Lunch and breakfast. Wow. Thank you so much. That, that is like beautiful. Wow. That's I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, of wow. course. I made you like a breakfast uh, um, yeah, the breakfast sand sandwiches, you know, the crescent with the bacon. Uh -huh. And um, those are turkey. Uh, I put mayo, Dijon, lettuce, tomato, turkey, and Swiss. Wow. All right. You and I got you some bacon. Uh, Thank you. Love you. Can I espresso for the rod? I'll take an espresso shot if you don't mind. That'd be great. Cheers. Cheers, bud. Oh, it's really hot. You just faced that, bro. It's really hot. <laughs> you okay? Wow. You okay? <laughs> really hot. I didn't yeah. know you were actually going to drink it. I was just. Oh, I I'm gonna blow in mine a little bit. Wow. If you guys are in the area, come to Chris's shop. Espressos, sandwiches, cookies, everything's very authentic. He's from France, and a lot of the cuisine there is, is from his hometown, which is really cool. And he made his sandwiches. How sweet. How nice. Ryan did get third degree burns on that trip, though, <laughs> so I feel for him a little bit. Spot number one? Spot number one. We're, do we're doing on the fly. Yeah, I love fly. this. Fly or die. Fly or die. What are we looking for here? So we're walking the bank right now. Uh, we're looking for two giant logs picked up right on the bank. And a lot of the times, what gives them up before I even see the snakeheads are little tiny air bubbles that come up. And that's, so these snakeheads are on fry about, they could either be a centimeter to, to four or five inches. They come up to the top of the water to breathe there because snakeheads breathe there. Yeah. Like that down that there, right there that could little be. surface. Yeah. What? What? Really? Giant snakehead, giant snakehead. Multiple? Go, 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 go. Anyway. They're right there, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, huge. I see. Huge. They are huge. Can I take a cast from over here? They are huge. Yeah, try to get it over there. Oh, I got you. I see him. I see him. I see him. I see him. Oh, I spooked him. No, it's fine. I'm behind him. It's fine. It's fine. Wow, that was cool. I saw him. Their fry is right there. Those are. About oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, a couple yeah. hundred baby bullseye snakeheads. Wow. So they're gonna come back. Yep. They, they have to come back. Let, let's just ease off off yep. the bank. Yeah. We're at spot number one right now. We're basically in the backyard of suburban life. This is the zone that Ryan took us to. We pulled up. Not more than ten minutes. We've already seen two. All right. Go right underneath that branch. Pass like as far as you can. Okay. Perfect. Oh, he's he's coming right towards it. Yeah. He's coming right towards it. He's coming right towards it. He was charging it at first. Yeah, he's right. Is that two? Oh my god. 
Okay. It's a good one. I gotta get it right there, bro. That's... I don't know if he's hunting or what No, I think that's his. He's got, oh there's God. two. Oh yeah, that, those are his babies. Go, 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 he ate you. Did he? he you. I didn't see it. Oh my God, he you just sure? ate you in space. Yeah, yes, yes, 100%. Go, strip. What? Yes. He just got ate, I bro. felt nothing. Yeah, I know. I'm just, nice. for whatever reason, struggling with this heavy fly. I think, I think it's actually good that, uh, we're about to go peacock fishing, so you're, you're gonna get the feel. Yeah, I need to. You know? I don't fly fish that much. All right, I blew my shot at probably five paired up snakeheads. So if you wanna multiply that by two, that's 10. 10 snakehead I had a shot at. Still a little rusty with the flies. We're gonna remedy that. We're gonna go chase after some peas in here. Is that what's in here? Big peacocks, Big there's pee some snakeheads too, but we're after giant peas. Yeah. Sight fishing. Give us a couple minutes, get warmed up. I'm just, I don't know, I'm rusty. When we were tarpon fishing, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I'm obviously like, like not the best, but the snakeheads, but let's get warmed up. Let's get the line tight. Oh, yes, it's still there. There we go. Little pee. Go. Nice. First pee on the fly. It's being funny. They were like eating the tail of it, and then finally that one just choked it. So much fun. Peacocks are amazing, but they're more amazing on a little five way. This is a little guy, too. They get significantly bigger. Nice stuff. Just crush that, that little uh, conehead streamer. Gorgeous. Pond hopping for exotics. He just can't beat it. Hey, Jimmy, go back with your buddies. There's, got, there's one on me, John. Like, Still? Right on mine. You. Oh, oh, did you see that? That was gnarly. Yes. Oh, oh! He's right there. It's so crazy. John and I are about to get the double. Come on, double up. Come on. Haven't even made it to the spot yet. It's the appetizer. So this is a really crazy fly. I found this thing like two years ago, sitting on a dock in the west coast of Florida. And now we're catching peas. Beautiful peacock, really pale bars running down her, but ooh, off to a decent little start here. I'll see you later. Go back with your school, buddy. Mm -hmm. oh. There we go. Oh, yeah, Large mouth. Largey. Yeah, that was sweet. Decent little one, B. It's a bit of largemouth on some hair too. So much fun. Not too many places you can catch peas and largemouth in the same cast. Not too bad. Chunky little dude, kind of reminds me of how we started this trip in Orlando. Catching busies. Peace out, brother. Good one. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. That was crazy. That was crazy. Nice one. Yeah. He smoked it in like an inch of water. So cool. They are so epic, man. Everyone looks, every one of them looks so different too. Like you get some that are pale, you get some that are all like colored up, have blotches. Check it out. Beautiful pea, pond hopping for peas. Such fun. I don't think you can do anything else that's more fun as far as like inland freshwater fishing goes. Like these guys hum. You can catch them on lures, flies, live bait. They're such great fish. Wow. And this is coming from someone too, who's been to the Amazon and caught the big versions and also Ryan has too, and he still does this. Back you go, buddy. Gnarly. Whoo. Over there, dude. Yes, sir. So much fun. Thank you guys, that was awesome. There's one right there, stop, stop, stop. One right in front of you, one right in front of you. Oh yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm looking for something. He's looking for my fly. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That was disgusting. Oh, my God. Look at that one. Look at that one. Oh, yeah, I see him. Yeah. 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 Dude, it hit the water and he was on. Oh, dude, no wonder. Oh, a hook. 
What? <laughs> Broke the hook off. No way. That makes so much sense. John's hook is gone. I've just been teasing these fish, literally. <laughs> I was wondering why I wasn't getting hooked because they would eat it and I'd like kind of put a little tension. I wasn't fully strip setting, but like I wasn't feeling anything. <laughs> makes sense. No hook. Oh, oh yeah. Look at him. Yeah, so fired up. Here, take this. Oh, you little one, little one, little one. That's the that's the female, or the male. <laughs> Get, him, Get the big one. That was cool. Sounds good. <laughs> so much fun, dude. So I can tease on the fly, blind casting, sight casting. It's too good. Got him. Double. <laughs> is that is that her? Nope. Different one. Different one. No. Sh doubles. <laughs> Pushing P right here. Pushing P. <laughs> Double urban peacocks. That's nice up, bro. Oh, they are so yeah. hard to hold. Crushing. This is what we needed. We needed to just get that, get that monkey off our backs and catch some peas. Just come, come tight, no matter what we're catching. But this is, uh, this is what I'd rather be spotter? catching. Yeah, dude, look at that. Oh no. oh no, it's not. We caught one in here that has a smiley face on its tail, so we're seeing if we can catch him again. So epic. All right, see you, girls. Uh, I guess boy, boy and girl. <laughs> Kicked off like males. Honestly, I think those are both males. You think so? Yeah, I took a better look, yeah. Wow. Wow. I wish we had peas in Texas. You know they tried? <laughs> really? Yeah, they tried to stock them in Texas and no it, it just it got too cold. But, you know, if I you can't get them in Texas, just come here. Wake up with a ride. Come to Florida, it's a little go flight. Go spank them. <laughs> <laughs> that is so sick. Let's go, baby. Nice being sus. There we go. Got him. Got him. Oh, that was so cool. Ooh, airborne. Airborne. Going to the reel. <laughs> That's awesome. That is too much fun. Got a big boy. Got a big boy. Oh, he just came undone. Jesus, that thing is huge, dude. That thing is huge. That thing was spitting wake. Holy f dude, lots. Lots is going on right now. Not even gonna take him out of the water. Just a quick little unhook and she's gone. Hey, take it easy, Bubba. Okay. See you later. Get back down there. Hey, he's lit. <laughs> this is so awesome, man. We went from just like grinding our wieners off. We literally walked like three miles on a flat to catch a, a reef tank fish. And now we are just crushing the peas all on the hair too. Love fly fish. I need to do more of it. I'm a little rusty, but after the first couple of fish, it just kind of feels natural. Let's keep it going. Giant snake right here. You see him, bro? Head towards the bank. Damn. Yeah, I see him. There you go. Keep it. bringing it to him, keep bringing it. Now work this literally so So fast. slow. That is it. That is it. He's, he's, he's nose on it. He's nose on it. He's nose on it. He's nose on it. He's looking at it. Twitch, tiny twitch, tiny twitch. He's gonna suck it in. Got him, <laughs> got him, Take got him, on. got him. Take That's so on. sick, dude. <laughs> That is so sick. <laughs> Holy hell. That's awesome, man. What a cool fish. That was an epic eat, too. <laughs> they are awesome, man. Look at the death roll. Yeah. I didn't know they did that. They roll like catfish. Oh, that's not a bad one. Yeah. Really pretty fish. Unbelievable. That was the coolest eat, dude. Yep. Mondo worm, too. Let's go, baby. Is that what that is? Yeah. Mondo? Nice. Nice. Ooh. You're in his gill plate. So sharp. Or are they? Wow, they pull, man. <laughs> We're hooked up and try to land this guy. They are so powerful. They look like long and lean, but that is, that's all muscle. Like they are just pure muscle. Yeah, I'm in his gill plates, that kind of sucks. All right, we're getting that, I think, yeah. Unreal. There we go. Nice, let's go. We did it, dude. Congratulations. P is my first ever snakehead. It's like you never, never, fishing is a never a guarantee. And even though the conditions are perfect and Ryan's been doing eyes. this forever, you just don't know if you're gonna get one. Wow, dude, that's so gnarly. Woo, that is awesome, man. Grab that line. Thank you, man. Look at that, look at the stars, like this, oh. Wow, they are pretty. Even though they're not supposed to be here and they're super invasive, you cannot deny these guys fight hard, look incredible, and they're just gorgeous. And they're also extremely table fair. They're delicious. Yeah, really good eating. I read something too that they use them for like, uh, medicinal purposes too. I don't know if it actually oh, really? works. Yeah, like where they're native from, like huh. the people there uh, will eat them for, you know, just wellness. In the early 2000s, some like 
fancy seafood restaurants got in trouble because they passed these off as yellow edge grouper. No way. Yep. <laughs> People probably couldn't tell the difference. No, you can't. So good. They're, they're delicious. Just as good as like wow. mangrove snapper, grouper. I mean, they're super good. And, and now something cool about this fish, you see these like little bits of turquoise. They only get that when they're spawning. So this one's all lit up. Normally. He wasn't paired up though. He was, no, he wasn't paired he was up. But, but this one's definitely spawning for sure. Yeah. We're about to. Yeah. Look at that thing. Mean Dude, mugging you. <laughs> you can see how they get their names. Look, Just look at that point of view. Yeah, he's pissed. He's like, damn it, I fell for it. <laughs> We've had a lot of shots of this fish on the fly. In the morning, decided we just go with something I'm more comfortable with, grab the, the Guggen rod and, and stuck him. Sir, Appreciate it, man. Yeah, no, that means so much to me. You have no oh, idea. Dude. My first ever snake. I knew it would happen, but oh, we're not done gosh. yet. We're not done yet. First ever, ever? First ever, ever, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, that's... that's a good one. No, well, well, look, and, and that's why they call him a snakehead right there. <laughs> he slithered off into the water. That was probably the best release I've ever had on any <laughs> fish. Yeah, no, they're actually uh, land breathers. Well, not land breathers, they're air breathers. They can breathe over air. Over 24 hours. Over 24 hours, so you guys might have been tweaking. Wow, you had that fish out of the water for quite some time. They can literally, you know, jump on land and come back. The whole myth of them crawling in the grass is not true. No. Right? Is no, it? Yeah, Do they actually? Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, what? Yeah. What happens is sometimes, like, hawks or something will come down, they'll grab one. Or sometimes, a lot of times, people will, will just leave him on the bank to die. And I've been fishing, and I see a snakehead all dried up. He's been in the sun for hours and hours. And I'll bring him to the water, and he'll swim off like nothing ever happened. That is ridiculous, bro. Holy, Dude, is that, that really, a is that really a mondo, mondo worm? Yeah, it's a mondo worm. Oh, we caught on a mondo worm. Dude, mondo. Ryan just hooked me up with a curl tail. I didn't realize it was a mondo worm, but yeah, that's uh might be one of the, have you caught them on Mondo's before? Oh yeah. Oh, I was gonna say yeah. that, I was, if it wasn't. Mondo with an underspin on a weighted EWG is one of my go-to. You might be one of the first people to ever catch a snake on a Mondo. Well, let's catch another one on <laughs> Yeah. Oh, good spot. He's way, he's like in that back corner. He looks like a palm leaf. Oh, wow. Yup, crushed it. That was dope. Nice job, bro. <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> Oh, get him! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Head. That was sweet. On the fly too. On the fly. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow, I don't know how you. I don't know how you saw that fish. The fish was the fish was yeah. laid up in an inch of water. That was so sick. He just ate that beautiful little snakey. Wow. I mean, I don't know. This is why they call them snakeheads. Watch this. And that is a snakehead for you. He just found his way back in the water. Let's catch some nice more. Nice job. That was really cool, man. I just like watching that go down. <laughs> oh my God. That's big snake. Big, big snake. snake. Big snake. Keep studying. That's a giant, John. Big snake. That is a giant. Big snake. Big snake. That was so. Oh, he just pulled off. No. What the? No! He just pulled hooks! Oh! Come on. That was a freaking giant. I know, I saw him. That was a freaking giant. How the sh do they pull hooks? You gotta keep sticking them. With those hollow bodies, they're kind of tough. God. Big one? Big as a drag. And we actually have the smaller one, which is a freaking good one. Oh, oh my, my gosh! It's all so beautiful. That big one is way bigger than it. Yeah. This is the little one. Look at that. Two spotter. Gorgeous, Seriously dude. Cool Gorgeous. Beautiful fish. A little two spotter. This actually looks like a Popoco peacock because mm -hmm. he's got that black dot right there. So different species. But look how deep and dark and defined her bars are. Three bar. Here we go. There she goes. Last spot of the day, we're at a golf course. We fish neighborhood ponds, roadside canals, and this is where we're ending. This is true, like, Florida hopping right now. This is Florida man vibes. This is Florida man vibes. Again, shout out to Ryan for taking me. This is uh, hopefully we're gonna seal the deal. Find him, what's in here? Goal. Hopefully, big, yeah, we're, we're gonna try to stick this, with the this fly. This pond, you have no idea. There's giant clowns, big peacocks, and the biggest snakeheads. We saved the best for last, so. All my Stay favorites. tuned, guys, because this is going to be fishy. Ryan, what is it right now? Final sound. No, no, no. What is it right now? What is it? It's, it's lit. Oh, it's lit. <laughs> it is lit. <laughs> this is our last ditch effort. 
We're running across the green right now. I see him. I see the fish, yeah. John! What? Big snake right here. His head is right there. His head is right there. Did I just dip it? Oh, yeah. Just yeah, dip just put it. it. Put it, put it. No, no. Cast pass him real quick. I'm going to be in the sludge. He's going to eat you. He's going to eat you on sight. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh. He's going to eat you on sight, bro. Oh Take your God. time. Just put it on him. Oh He's going to eat you on sight. Put it back again. Oh, my God. He's going to eat you on sight. Don't worry about that. It's all reaction. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. No, he's there. He's there. This is your fish. Put it right on him. Gradually. Go! Got him. Yes! Got oh, him. No, don't horse him. Let him don't run. Let him, him. Yep, let, let him run. run. Let him run. Oh my god. Yes. That was so yes. sick. Let that was run. so sick. That was so sick, baby. Let him run. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. I'm running back with him. Oh my god. Got him to the reel. Alright, reel. Get on the reel. Get yep. on the reel. Yep, yep, yep. That was so dirty. That was so dirty, yeah, baby. <laughs> that was That's so it. sick. He's in the grass oh right now. God. Oh, it's a giant It's a dog. good fish. She's just in the grass. Should I horse her? What do I do? No, no, no. Just play her out. Okay. Come she's... tight to her. Come tight to her. Oh, she just came on oh. It's all good, bro. Hey, we had the chance. That's all that matters. Well, there's another tight. one there. Dang. What, what I do wrong? I mean, I don't know. No, I, no, no. I couldn't get it. I don't want to put too much pressure on the grass. That's a good fish. Oh. Send it back down on there. I was like, I saw something come up on it. Cloud! 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 Oh my god! Cloud! Oh my god! On the cloud! cloud. Holy! Oh! Oh! Holy oh. Holy Dude! 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. I've never caught a con artificial in my life or on fly, and I've been living here. That's the life. trifecta, dude. <laughs> dude, we did not think that was gonna happen. A oh freaking my God. clown! Look how wild these things are. Oh, oh my lord! <laughs> another, another Florida invasive fish species. They're like one of the few fish in the world that can swim backwards. Did not think we'd catch one on the fly. Oh baby, that was so crazy. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Holy hell. That's it, baby. Look at that. Yeah. I'll take that over a snake hit on fly any day. 100%. Coolest thing ever. They are such epic fish. Oh my gosh, another quick shot and we'll send them back in the water. Oh. That was incredible, bro. Oh my gosh. Stoke him. What just happened, John? <laughs> we just were going for snake hit on the fly and this guy came out of right field. Oh. Holy hell. Look at the size of that clown. That is epic. On the five weight. Such a crazy looking Insane, thing. dude. Such a crazy look. Let's watch him swim backwards. Yeah. What an amazing way to end the day. Like, that's just stupid. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh. Wow, they're hardy. I thought yeah. he'd be more fragile. He just, he just went. Put it there, yeah, man. man. <laughs> Thank oh, you, yeah, dude. dude. The trifecta. Same. The crazy thing is, I literally was just about to say, I've caught one on live bait right on the edge before. Yeah. Never that close. I mean, you were about, don't, I don't even know what just happened. I don't even know what just <laughs> happened. That was insane, bro. What a freaking day. That was insane. Huh. Oh, I want to give a huge shout out to, to Ryan for just coaching me through this whole process. Dude, Not only fly fishing these waters, but then just fishing them in general is like, it's it's so unique. I've learned so much today. Caught all three. Went from <laughs> catching, never catching a clown, never catching a snakehead, catching very few peas in Florida on the fly that epic, to man. that. Holy hell, let's you, go, you, baby. Bro. Let's Woo. go. Casting concrete. We made it. We made it happen this morning. I said, we need to shake that wall. That's all we needed. Let's freaking go. Lucky fly. Lucky fly, unlucky angler. My boy. Out. Hey, thank you, you guys so it. much. Epic. I appreciate it. Freaking send, man. First ever clown knife on the fly. And he's gonna give it to me. That's very, that's very sweet, dude. That's Enjoy very it. sweet. Yeah. Hey, put it yeah. there. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Had some really good coaches today. It's kind of just saved the past couple of days. Really, we're just struggling, absolutely struggling. I like this part of Florida. It's a little more quiet, a lot of fishing opportunities, whereas walking a flat for five miles for a box fish really is not the move. But anyway, on to our next destination. We got a four hour drive tonight. It's gonna be hectic, but uh, hopefully tomorrow it's all worth it. My buddy, Wes Davis, who lives in where we're going, uh, linked us up with uh, a guy I think is gonna put us on a nice little touch, a nice little cherry on top of this series, but we're gonna go packed up and uh, heading on the road. See you guys there. Good morning, wieners. Welcome to our last 
And final stop for Casting Concrete Florida. We are in Jacksonville. This is a place I have visited very, very few times. Actually, I think last time I was here, I got kicked out of a bar at uh, Wes Davis's wedding. Haven't been back since, but we're not gonna be doing any of that. Uh, we're gonna be linking up with a friend of a friend, my buddy Wes, who films a lot for Guggen and uh, is a part owner, has a buddy down here who has been so kind and generous to take us red fishing. Uh, on the flats, or I guess on some of the, like the shoal beds and things of that nature around here in Jacksonville. Before I originally planned this trip, I wanted to try to catch fish that was endemic to each region of Florida that we went to. So, you know, peacock bass, obviously in Miami, you know, tarpon in Tampa, so on and so forth. And when I think of Jacksonville, I think of fishing skinny water for aggressive redfish. And that's hopefully what we're gonna get a chance to do today. And rather than kind of doing this on our own, like we tried to do in the Keys, which ended up pretty miserably, uh, I figured we'd we'd at least link up with someone for the first part of the day who knows the lay of the land, who is a local, who is a native, and can just kind of give us a bit of a starting point for today. We're in it. This is a weird feeling, man. Like we stayed at a Holiday Inn, drove like less than 20 minutes, and now we're on the marsh. This <laughs> is go. crazy. By the way, this is Greg. He is uh, he is going to be our our saving grace today, our guide. Thankfully, uh, anglers anglers alike have that that connection, and I connected with Wes, and Wes put me in touch with Greg, and he's been so kind last minute to take us out. He's, he runs a guide service out here, primarily fly fishing yeah. out here in Jacksonville. So if you guys want to come and do this, fish this cool stuff, and I don't have to travel that far, it's right here. So I'll leave, uh, I'll leave his Instagram down below and hopefully you guys have the opportunity to do what we're doing today. Like I said, this is our last day. So we're just gonna make the most of it. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna see if we can find fish. The condition's not necessarily ideal, like the water's dirty. You know, we've got some stuff against us, but you know, we're here and we're ready. And we're gonna just see if we can spin cast a few and just, uh, I don't know, smack a red or two. This is fun. I'm so glad we're here. I think this is a good way to end this whole series. Yeah. Feels great, man. Oh, we were dying in West Palm. Holy, there's one right there. Oh, he spooked. Oh, damn, it. Sorry. Off. Damn, I was so subtle with that. Yeah, they're super spooky fish. They're super, super there was spooky. Another one laid up, he was dark. On that side? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shoot. I just brought it off the grass so lightly, and he just. Spooked it was really close, though, that's the thing. Okay. Like, I didn't have much room to get in front of him. Yeah, try and get him lead. It's almost like you want him to, like, see it from a distance. Distance, yeah, I got gotcha. you. What, like, even if I'm bringing it kind of to his side, or does it have to be in that, like, I would try and keep it like at least six feet or okay. six inches away from it. Okay, gotcha. Like guys coming by them, that's enough for them to like lunge on it. I see. Um, it's, that's what's tough about Jackson. I was like, so there's a lot of bait, which you've already seen. There's a lot of bait. Yep. And the fish don't have to work very hard, so they don't, they're not going to chase stuff. You know, I see. They're not going to yeah. chase your, your stuff. Maybe a topwater plug because they really want to hammer it. But uh, yeah, they're not going to like run it down. They're sitting and waiting. Yeah, so that's why it's so difficult. Like, you just, you There's just, one right there. Got him. That was so sick. He ate it. That was so cool. <laughs> yeah, he was just roaming the bank. That was dirty. <laughs> we were hooked up, baby. This is like my favorite type of fishing. I always tell people, like, if I could catch two fish the rest of my life, it'd be redfish and striper. They are so epic. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I saw him go on top of it, and I just felt slack. And I was like, "Oh, he's got it." <laughs> what a beautiful moment that was! Incredible. The green. Oh my gosh, dude! Super skinny water, Jacksonville Mars fishing. It is just like the best thing ever, man. Being able to visually watch a fish eat your lure is pinnacle. Everyone loves it. Sweet. <laughs> nice job, dude. Good job, bro. Thank you so much, yeah. Greg. Yeah, no worries. Sincerely appreciate it. Wow. He, he ate the gulp. He ate the gulp. <laughs> there we have it. That was one of my goals this trip is to catch a redfish. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we've caught a lot of fish that have come unexpected, but this one was on the agenda and we made it happen. Huge shout out to no Greg worries. for pulling around showing us his waters and uh, giving us a taste of what Jacksonville is all about. Absolutely crushed the artificial shrimp. Beauty. Everybody, thank you for tugging. Awesome. <laughs> that hey, felt so that good. Put it there. That was very rad. Saw that fish for, well, actually we saw one in the mud, in the dirty water, 
made a cast, turned on it, didn't eat, couldn't connect. And we're coming around this little point right behind some oysters and this guy was just cruising the bank. A lot of uh, my first attempts at these fish have been pretty much duds, just kind of getting the rust off as we have the entire trip. But that worked out. That fish saw it, he was hungry, he was willing. It made it happen, that was so gnarly. Oh yeah, yeah, I see him now. It's too close to him. Sorry, boys. Yep. Is it, yeah. There's that one all the way up there, too. Got him. Got him. That was so sick. Just felt I scared you were pulling too fast. Just felt slack. That was wild, man. That was wild. There's yeah, there's plenty. That was so cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there's quite a few back here. There's another nice one right there too. Yeah, this pocket is stacked. So much fun. Uh no, I got him. Should be straight. I got him. I'll just give her a little belly hug there. This one's not fighting as hard as the last one. Come. Yeah. I know. All the mud. Yeah. It's so wild. Hey, buddy. Here we have it. Redfish number two. That was dirty. We just pulled in this pocket and there was a lot in here. Took a shot at two. Those guys were not interested, but this guy was all about it. Such cool fish. If you've never caught a redfish before, you need to get on it. And this is probably the best scenario to do it. Come in the shallow water, pull around, and uh, bring a fly or a little a little scramp and crush them. Back in the water she goes. So cool. He's even got like grass on him. It's so shallow. Yeah. He's got like... There's a parasite on his back. Yeah, I saw that. This, this, what, we're, what we're fishing in, I was just so shallow. And, you know, these fish are quite literally dragging in the mud looking for crabs and shrimp and just about anything they can, eat, they can eat. So when you pull a fish up like that, he's like got sediment on him. And look at my line too. It's just like nothing. It's just really mushy bottom, but in that bottom is food for these fish. So that's the reason why we're up here. All right, we just moved a couple. They're out off the bank some. Yeah, just keep an eye. Keep an eye to your left too. So like, do like a, you know, 10 to two. The, the whole idea behind this fishing is it's, it's very visual oriented, you know, it's not like bass fishing where you flip to a log and then you just kind of guess, ah, oh, there could be a bass there and you sit and wait. This is hunting at its finest, like hunting without actually hunting. It's, it's hunting for reds. And we're in skinny water looking around. You've got Greg up top pulling. So he's like, has a little bit more elevation than I do. I've got some elevation on the bow and we're just scanning this water. Some are on the bank, some are off in, in the, these oyster beds. And you just have to think fast, make a very calm cast in a general area that's near its head and, and want to bring that that bait kind of in front of that fish but not directly in front there's a lot of technical stuff that goes into this especially when you incorporate the fly but just using little tiny shrimps little tiny artificial shrimps weighted on a weedless hook seven foot good and green rod and that's kind of the process obviously i just dumped it down but generally speaking that's what we're doing you're just using your eyes to find these fish not a whole lot of blind casting matter of fact none at all so we've just uh, just gonna go down this stretch and see what we can see. Like up there? He just ate it. That was cool. He just ate it. That was so sick. <laughs> Line just went slack. That was dirty, man. <laughs> Let's go. Holy. <laughs> Holy! There you go. There she is. Oh, wow! So green, so green, or I guess so red. <laughs> that was an awesome little scenario. This is kind of our last spot of the day, last ditch effort to get another fish. Honestly, like I was content with just a cast of a singular redfish today, and here we have three, three, three in the boat. Um, we spooked some really good fish on this flat earlier. They pushed off, some were pretty decent, and then we came back just to revisit to see if they set up, and 
saw the wake of, I don't know if it was this one or another one, but saw the wake and just kind of gave a blind, blind cast in there. And she wanted it, absolutely charged it. These redfish are just one of those fish where if it's a 20 inch it's fun, and if it's a 40 inch it's fun. They're just such cool fish, man. And they're full of aggression. Come here, buddy. So sick. Dude, this has been so much fun. So I didn't think we'd be able to get to do this. I was oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh, I want to catch redfish when you come oh, to. Dude, there's one sitting right here, John. Is there really? I swear to you, I'm watching a tail right here. Oh, I, see, I can see I can see it from right here. Yeah, the stand up is right there. Oh, yeah, can you yeah, he's right there. There's two of them. Is it really? Yeah. Oh. Dude. Dude. He sees it. Spooked. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I can see him from all the way down here. Did you guys hear that? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's fish is literally drumming underwater. They make that weird noise. Do you know why they do that? I don't know. It's weird. Uh, she's gone. So cool. Wieners, you freaking did it. Put her there. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, no worries. Seriously, incredible. Like it's always a treat. It's always a freaking treat chasing after these things. And you can do, you can catch redfish a lot of different ways. You can go off the coast when they're when they're schooling, and they are widespread throughout the United States. But if I had to pick one way to fish them, no matter what the size is, it's this. You know, just creeping around in these little salt, salt marshes and in inches of water, and then watching them tail, watching them wake. It's just, it's really incredible. And you can do on the fly, light tackle today, we're just using a bass rod and it gets the job done. But that was insane. Freaking so much fun. Three redfish, did not expect that. Thank you so yeah, much, no brother. Worries, no worries, That Good was time. awesome. Good time. If you ever in Texas, let me know. Yeah, yeah, for I don't, sure. I don't know if you have any fish down there, but. Maybe. Some big bass will make it happen. Yeah, what's up, dude? Seriously, thank you so much. We got her done. Huge shout out to Greg and Wes for making this all happen. Three redfish when our anticipations were literally this slow. We've gotten kicked. We've gotten kicked around. We've got our ass absolutely beaten up. We are staying in the city for literally one day and then trying to figure out how to catch fish with just about no knowledge. I mean, we are linking up with some really awesome people, some guides, and they are kind of teaching us and walking the process of how to fish these cities around Florida. But for the most part, I would say we would just kind of jump into this. So like the times we've gone canal fishing for those peas, it's like kind of just, I don't know, maybe we can catch them, maybe this will work. So it's really tested, I feel like, my angling ability and my ability to kind of work on the fly and film a video because the worst thing ever is not only not catching fish but not only catching fish for you guys all right this next fishing mission we're on is a little less technical not doesn't require as much skill per se as a redfish mission one thing we're going to need to get before we do this or at least attempt to do this is we need to get some baits we're at the bait store right now we've got a couple options some varieties you know i am i'm not stuck on one style of bait for example i like my bun length Franks, these are good, these are great. It just depends on kind of what the overcast is doing. If it's cloudy, if it's a bit drizzly, I like sticking with the bigger profile, the more slender profile. Um, if it's sunny out, I like to go subtle. So what we have over here is some micro glizzies. These are also very effective as well. Don't sleep on the micro glizzies. And you know, if all else fails, one thing you can always count on is um, where to go. Oh, of course, your smart dogs, plant-based for all you, uh, you vegan folks out there. This is really, really what comes in the clutch if the tried and true doesn't pull through. We've got some variety here. We're gonna take uh, our fresh bait and we're gonna go to the ponds and see if we can make something happen. <laughs> uh, I have a good feeling we might get kicked out of this spot as we have just about every spot we've been to in Florida, but Kev actually used to live here and come here in Jacksonville quite some time and he had a hot tip on a big, ugly, elusive fish that lives in this pond just behind you guys. So we're gonna see if we can catch one of these guys. There's two. Dude, he followed the hook. We spotted a couple bass on our epic cart mission, which ended up being an epic failure. And uh, we spotted some LMBs that seemed to be interested in our wieners, plant-based wieners, that is. These are about um, one and a half inch micro glizzies, which is like honestly pretty big. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my little circle hook that I normally use for live bait, and I'm just breaking off a little piece. That's like probably about medium size. And uh, we're just gonna thread it through there. Hopefully this fish likes something that's a little bit more natural. I don't think uh, these bass are vegan, if I'm being completely honest. And I'm about to run out of daylight too. There we go, got her. Ate the glizzy. We got a glizzy bass. <laughs> that is so sick, dude. <laughs> well, 
Didn't think we'd bring hot dogs to a pond and catch this. That is so stupid, dude. That is so stupid. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think we're ending Florida casting concrete with a hot dog caught on a bass. We are ending the trip how we started, catching one of my favorite fish, largemouth bass. I know it's so cliche, but the, the emphasis I've been trying to make this whole time, actually, let me put this guy back real quick. See you later, bud. Thank you. I won't tell your bros you just ate a glizzy. Just between me and you. <laughs> the emphasis that I've been trying to make this whole series is it's important to go out there and have fun. I grew up in the suburbs. Most of what I fished was stuff like this. I fished a lot of concrete waters, waters that were basically surrounded by sidewalk, and it's how I got into fishing, and I think one of the things I'm trying to drive home to all of you is this is how people get started fishing. Not everyone has the, the luxury to live out in the Tennessee mountains or in Southwest Texas where there's crystal clear blue water, you know, grow up on like the keys. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, I guess, thought this whole series, trying to just show you guys, you can do fun stuff like this. You can have fun. You don't have to catch big fish. You don't have to catch many fish. Just go out there, get a buddy, get your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your sister, your brother, and go explore some urban waters. Today's the day we leave. It's the 17th. We had a pretty fulfilling day yesterday. But I woke up, stretched a bit, came out here to look outside this this window had the beautiful view of Top Golf, and I noticed down there at the pond that is right next to the Holiday Inn that we're staying at was a little something, a little grass cart. The fish we were after yesterday just decided to greet us right before we leave. I got a bone to pick with this fish. I'm not giving up. I got a flight in four hours, but I'm gonna make an attempt to catch one of these fish. It's a tradition that every casting concrete we end on a cart. Yeah. It's going down, baby. It's going down. <laughs> this is how, this is how you close casting concrete, baby. <laughs> it is, I think we have to always make this sort of tradition. Chasing after carp on our last and final day. That was so freaking cool. Just a little tiny grass carp. Normally they eat grass, but a lot of, in a lot of lakes they get fed like bread and crackers or hot dogs. And we weren't able to catch one last night, so this is an amazing way to to end the series and to part ways with Florida. Whatever, wait. This one's young too, it's a young buck, so he's ripping and ready to go. Take a look at that. <laughs> this is how you close casting concrete. They are not the most sought after fish here in Florida, or I guess widespread, but they have a special place in my heart. Oh my God, right on cue. They're so full of energy, piss and vinegar. And this is just a little one. They get up to 70 pounds. They're such cool fish. Primarily they eat insects and grass, but in this case, ate some of that good old white bread. Unreal. They're really pretty. They got that incandescent in their uh, scales. They're cool fish, man. Don't believe they're native, but they're wicked fun to catch. Back she goes. Gotta get in the water. <laughs> Woo! That was so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is how you close Casting Concrete Volume 2. I just want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in and watched this little series and watched the previous one we filmed all over Texas. It means so much when you guys tune in, comment, and share your opinions and thoughts. I'm not sure where we're going to film the next Casting Concrete, but that's where you come in. Drop a comment down below. Vote on where you think we should film another one of the series. This was so much fun. I don't even know how many species we caught, but we caught well over 10. We caught well over 30 fish. Met some amazing people, traveled all over Florida, and this is an experience I will truly never forget. And it happened all right here in the concrete jungle. Thank you so much for the view. I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.